Hello and welcome to my new series, Electronics for Beginners. In this video, we're going to look at what you should buy if you're just starting in electronics. This video is for absolute beginners, and so if you already know what you're doing, maybe this is not for you. Let's get started. One of the first things you should get when getting started in electronics is a breadboard. A breadboard is an easy way to build circuits that doesn't require a soldering iron, which can be cost prohibitive if you're just a newcomer. Breadboards are extremely cheap. This one has 400 connection points and it's only $1.50, and this one has 830 connection points and it was only $2. I recommend getting a few of these, but if you can only afford one, just get one. The next thing I recommend getting is a set of breadboard jumper leads. They allow you to connect components to other components on the breadboard or even to link two breadboards together. These are also extremely cheap with a 65 piece kit coming in at only $1.20. The next thing I recommend you get are resistors. You're going to need various different values, so I recommend getting a kit. I found a 600 piece kit with values as low as 10 ohms and as high as 1 mega ohm for only $3.50. Since you're just learning, you don't have to worry about the tolerance value at this point. It's usually given as a percentage, but all the circuits that beginners make are pretty tolerant of resistances. Any quarter watt through hole kit will work. The next components I recommend you get are LEDs. LEDs are great for making your first circuits, and they're also useful later on as indicators or as sources of light. I recommend getting a kit with various different colors. I found a 200 piece kit with five different colors, for $2.25. The next thing you should get are capacitors. These are ceramic capacitors, usually at smaller values. These are electrolytics, usually at higher values. I found a kit of ceramic capacitors, 300 for $1.50, and electrolytics, 120 for $1.80. Go ahead and pick up both, because a lot of projects you do will require different capacitance values. Next on the list are transistors. I recommend getting both types of common transistors, being PNP and NPN transistors, since they serve different purposes. For the NPN transistors, I recommend the 3904, which I found 100 pieces for $1.30. And for PNP transistors, I recommend the 2907, which I found 100 pieces for the same price. Next up are diodes. For diodes, I recommend getting the 1N4001. I found 100 pieces for $0.65. Cents. I mean, this is really cheap stuff. And lastly, for the basic components, you should get tactile switches. This allows you to choose whether or not current flows in a circuit, or even enable other parts of a circuit, or connect circuits together. These are also exceedingly cheap. I found 100 pieces of these tactile switches for 85 cents. If you've been adding up the cost so far, you'll see that we're only at about $16.50. This should be cheap enough for almost anyone to enter the hobby, and have plenty of extra components in case newbie mistakes damages some. Don't forget that many of these components can be salvaged out of broken electronics, but may require additional equipment. There are a few more things you should probably get if you're just getting started, though. One of those things is a multimeter. I know there are a lot of online recommendations for pretty expensive and precise multimeters, but honestly, you don't need anything that crazy if you're just getting started. There are a few things that your multimeter does require, though. You have to be able to check DC voltage, you have to be able to check DC amperage in the milliamp range, and you have to be able to check resistance. A few nice optional features are things like the diode check, capacitance check, and temperature checking capabilities. But don't spend extra money on multimeters with these features, because you may not even need them if you're just a beginner. The last thing you absolutely need before we get started is a way to power your breadboard. Now you can do this with a 9 volt battery and a couple uh, crocodile clips or or um, you can even tape on some wires if you really wanted to. But I found these uh, breadboard power supplies online and they only cost about 60 cents or so. So maybe get one or two of those. You can either power them with a 9 volt battery through the DC jack or you can actually connect it right to a power bank with the USB connector here. Either way, you need some way to power your breadboard. As far as optional stuff is concerned, well, if you're going to be following my channel and other channels on YouTube, you'll see that they often do projects that require integrated circuits or ICs. Some of the most common ones are the triple five timer and the op amp. This is actually a audio op amp, uh, LM386, and this is an NE555P. 
And those can be had for three dollars for a hundred of the 555 timers and about a dollar for 10 LM386 audio op amps. So if you're interested in following the projects I'll be doing in the future, you may want to grab a bunch of these if you're already shopping online. Another thing to take a look at is these crocodile clips. You can get them extremely cheap. I think they're about two bucks for ten of them online, same sources. Um, but also you can make your own with uh, just buying the, the crocodile clip tips. And actually I have a video on these cheap ones and how they need to be repaired actually when you buy them. And that should just about cover everything you need to get started in electronics. Don't forget, the goal here is to learn, not to spend money. Don't let people convince you that you need to spend a lot of money to learn electronics. You really don't. It's more important that we just do things instead of buying things. And plus, with most of these components, you can build quite a few projects. Don't forget, most of these components can be salvaged, or you can split the cost of them with a friend. If you have ideas for beginner projects you'd like to see, please put them in the description below. If you have any improvements that I can do, also put that in the description. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Subscribe if you feel like it, and don't if you don't. Thanks for watching.